if the if the if there are red lines that are going to be crossed, well, there'll have to be red lines that are crossed on on some side or other to to, far, to find a compromise, won't there, Lena? Do you think that debt reduction? It's been so much a part of the Greek argument for so long. They've been arguing for a restructuring of Greek debt. Is that going to be part of this deal, or we have to wait for the third deal, a third bailout yes. for that? Well, French President Hollande um, made a very encouraging statement at the end of the Eurogroup meeting on, summit on Monday, uh, which seems like a long time ago now in terms of the, mic the market's uh, risk clock, uh, that uh, there has to be some, uh, th there is a willingness among Euro finance ministers to consider a further extension of Greek maturity. And I think that this is an important, actually, part of it. Um, the question is, does it politically headline this particular agreement, which could help um, Cyprus at home with the voters, that is a big question mark. It seems at this point to me, after the uh, inconclusive meeting last night, that perhaps European finance ministers are trying to te teach uh, Syria a, a lesson here about last-minute brink brinkmanship. Mm. And so there has to be a real commitment uh, from the Greek uh, part towards something that is um, uh, sustainable fiscally, politically, uh, but also economically. I yeah. mean, the, the important thing here is that the proposals that uh, Cyprus has put forward this week um, have uh, exactly the kind of um, political uh, risk um, scenario that have created this dual fear about uh, currency devaluation uh, and the banks run at home and the massive capital flight and fear about bailing in of higher net worth individuals. And that's precisely the Cyprus scenario that we had um, before capital controls mm. uh, and, a, and a deposit tax was effectively um, installed. So this is not the right way to go about in terms of restoring economic stability at home. Yeah, if we do end up in a situation where we, we're not talking about capital controls, we were before last weekend, that seems to have faded away at the early part of this week. But if we do start talking about that again towards the end of this week, I mean, is that where parallels with Cyprus end? Because a lot of commentators have been suggesting just because it was... You know, it was painful on the ground, of course, in Cyprus, but it seemed in retrospect to have gone quite smoothly. doesn't mean it would go smoothly or be very implementable in a Greek context. Well, Cyprus is still, ultimately, the, the job of a government here, we talk about trust. It's about restoring the full, the, the trust of Greek depositors, uh, voters and taxpayers in the full faith and credit of their government so that they can have a financial system that works in an economy that has some hope of growth down the line. And without this trust, none of this is going to be possible. And so I think what the ECB has done here, while being, uh, yes, incurring tremendous moral hazard by being effectively the only lifeline of liquidity support for the Greek state through its support through the Greek banks, um, what it has done is stayed very firmly committed to its promise in 2012 of doing whatever it takes to support the unity of the euro. Without the ECB support right now, Brexit will become an in inevitability. And so I think that what, what the ECB would want to do in any case was to, is to avoid comp Greek capital controls because rolling back Greek capital controls, returning the trust, that is going to be a very hard slog once we get there. So everything has to be done to prevent that.